yogis, it's Bri. Welcome to 30 Days of Mindful Movement. The theme for week one is Earth, which is why in this Root to Rise flow, we're going to focus on finding our balance through strong standing postures. Don't forget to subscribe to Allo Yoga's YouTube channel and comment below. Let's get started. We're going to begin our flow here in Tadasana Mountain Pose. I like to start that first Tadasana with feet hips distance because I feel like when my feet are hips distance, they're a solid foundation for the rest of my body. So taking your feet hips distance, gazing down, make sure the feet are parallel, spread your toes out wide, and then take your gaze forward, your hands by your side. Turn the palms open to broaden across the shoulders and close your eyes. Because we're focusing on rooting to rise, this is one of the best places to really feel that concept. We're on our feet all day long. Our feet have taken us everywhere so far in our lives. But it's really important to note that when we're walking, we're usually using our habitual patterns. But here in this yoga practice, you get to take a moment to really focus on your feet on the part of our body that's typically being used all day long without a conscious focus. So just begin to feel the soles of your feet. Notice whether there's more weight on the inside edge or the outside edge of the foot. Maybe there's more weight on the back of the foot than the front. And just see if you can begin to balance it out. Equal weight between the heels and the balls of your feet. Take a deep inhalation and lift your toes up, keeping the balls of the feet on the mat. Notice how the lift of the toes also engages the inner arches. And when the inner arches engage, that lifting, that rising action allows for the muscles above it in the legs, the shins, the quadriceps to begin to engage, to hold you up. Bring your attention back to the rooting action of the balls of the feet and the heels. Then as you inhale, once again, rise all the way up through the body, allowing the spine to get a little bit taller through the crown of the head. Keeping this length as you exhale out through your mouth, allow the shoulder blades to drop down, the navel to draw in. When we find this balance between rooting and rising in our physical body, we can begin to find that balance mentally, emotionally as well. One more clearing breath. Inhale, start to open your eyes. Open your mouth, exhale, sigh it out. Turning the palms out to the sides. Inhale, sweep the arms out to come up. When the arms are straight up, lengthen the sides of the waist. Exhale through the nose, draw your ribs in and down and your navel in towards the spine. You're gonna grab a hold of your right wrist with your left hand. Then as you root down through the right heel, inhale, rise up through the right side body and lean over towards the left. Trying to keep your torso in line with the hips, even though you're leaning to the side. So don't lean back or lean forward. Keep the navel and the ribs drawing in. And again, root firmly through the feet. And inhale, rise and lengthen the right side body. Exhale, lean a little bit more. Keep your right arm where it is. Take your left hand down to the left side body. Leaning just a tad bit more. Roll the right pinky back behind you to find space around the neck. Mm. And then inhale, rising all the way back up. Left hand comes up. Exhale, ribs and navel in. Grab a hold of your left wrist with your right hand, feeling your feet firmly pressing into the mat. Inhale, lengthen the left side body. And exhale, lean over towards the right. Drawing your ribs and navel in once again to support the spine or the muscles around the spine. Now taking your right hand down to the right side body and you wanna feel the feet firmly rooting down as you lengthen the left side body. So if you're tight around maybe even the hip flexors or psoas, possibly the side where the obliques are or even the lats, you'll feel this wonderful stretch. And then inhale, rising all the way back up, bringing your palms to touch, lengthen both sides of the waist equally. 
As you exhale, turn your hands out and sweep your hands behind your back, interlacing your fingers. Press the palms together and resist the urge to straighten your arms all the way. So keep a little bend in the elbows. From here, broaden across the collarbones and inhale, lift the chest up, reaching the knuckles down. Still gazing forward, as you exhale, start to bend your knees, keeping the weight back in your heels and sticking your tush back behind you for a modified chair pose. We're not gonna stay here for long, don't worry. Inhale, reach the knuckles down and slightly back. As you exhale, fold your ribs over your thighs, keeping the knees really, really bent here, maybe almost parallel to the ground. Relax your head. Then reach the knuckles up towards the sky, just a little bit longer in this shoulder stretch. I know it's intense on the front of the shoulders, but that's the point. Then sweep the hands down towards the mat and grab a hold of opposite elbows. Relax your head down. Straighten the legs just halfway. So you were in a seated position almost just then, resting your ribs on your thighs. Just lift your butt up a little bit, keeping a bend in the knees, and just allow for your head to drop freely down from the shoulders. Shake your head out, relax your jaw, and take a couple of ujjayi breath cycles here. Once again, coming back to the idea of rooting and rising. So your feet are on the mat and naturally, because our <laughs> brains are programmed to just take the path of least resistance, you lean back, right? Because you're probably avoiding sensation of stretch in the back of the body. So find equal weight between the heels and the balls of the feet once again, which would mean you'd have to lean slightly forward. Then lift your toes up, feeling the inner arches lift. Engage the front of your legs. So the uh, muscles at the front of the shins are engaging because you're lifting your toes. I want you now to lift your kneecaps up so the quadriceps engage. That'll protect your hamstrings as you stretch them. If it's comfortable for you, you can straighten the legs, making sure the quads are engaged. Lean forward just a little bit so the sits bones are stacking right over the heels. Then as you inhale, stay right here, still holding onto opposite elbows. Lengthen both sides of the waist. As you exhale, draw the ribs and navel in. Feeling nice and long. You might also feel really tight. No, that's normal. Then bring your fingertips down underneath your shoulders. Inhale to a flat back. If you can't reach the ground, fingertips to shins. Exhale, step your left foot all the way to the back of the mat. Place your left knee down onto the mat. If your knees hurt it, and you can always fold your mat over or tuck the toes under, or even untuck the toes, whatever works. Make sure that your right shin is in a nice straight line. The knee does not go past the ankle. From here, your hands come to your right knee and you push your torso up over your pelvis. You wanna make sure that the left knee is behind the line of the left hip because the purpose of this pose, you've just stretched the back body in that forward fold. We stretched the side body when we were standing. Now we're stretching the front of the body. Uh, the hip flexors, the quadriceps in this Anjaneyasana. We're also engaging the hamstrings of the front leg that you actually just stretched. So it's really balancing. If you feel like it's hard for you to balance here, your feet are probably too much on the same line, so make sure the feet are hips distance. Bend into your right knee, draw your navel in, and inhale, reach your arms up. As you exhale, try to find some stability in your stance. Squeeze the inner thighs together. If you want to challenge your balance even further, bring the palms to touch. Inhale, lift your chest, maybe even gaze up. Exhale, bring your fingertips back down, push down through the right foot, lift the left knee up and step that left foot forward, fold down Uttanasana. Let's do the other side. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, right foot steps all the way back. Make sure the feet are hips distance in width. Place your right knee down. Your left shin is in a nice straight line and your hands come onto the left knee. Press into your knee to lift the torso up over the pelvis. Your foundation is so important. A lot of times we're creating shapes because you're watching me and you're like, okay, my foot goes here, now I reach my arms up. But the foundation, the earth that you stand on, the rooting action of your feet, that's what gives you the ability to rise up and create this shape with integrity, right? 
So really draw the navel in, lengthen both sides of the waist, firm the inner thighs together, that's called mula bandha, then reach your arms up. Use your breath to find length in the spine as you inhale. Lift your chest up, bring the palms to touch, maybe even gaze up, and then exhale, hands come down, step the right foot forward to the front of the mat. I'm still hips distance with my feet. Exhale, fold it down. Then inhale, rising all the way back up towards standing, bringing the palms to touch. Exhale, hands to your heart center. Great job. Bringing your big toes to touch, a little space between the heels. So whenever you bring your feet together, I invite you to keep a, keep a little space between the heels because your feet are a triangle. So if you bring your heels together, it actually causes your pelvis to jut forward. We want neutral in the pelvis, so a little space. Hands by your side. Bend your knees, tap the ground with the fingertips. Then inhale, reach your arms up into Utkatasana chair pose. Once again, bringing your attention back to your feet. What's going on? Are you leaning forward with the knees? More weight in the balls of the feet? I want you to lean the weight back into the heels. Try to move the knees back. Sit the seat down a little more. Try to engage your glutes, so squeeze your butt. That'll pull the low belly in. Then lengthen both sides of the waist as you inhale. Maybe gaze up, palms touch. Exhale, folding all the way down. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, step back into plank position. Now, if you're new to yoga, you're new to having your hands on the ground, you can always be in a tabletop position, making sure your hands are shoulders distance, your index fingers turning forward. I like this a lot more, especially for those of us with tight shoulders, weak wrists. If you're new to yoga, index fingers forward just gives you more space in the shoulders. Grip with the fingertips, push down through the index finger knuckles, squeeze the forearms in, spread the shoulder blades wide, draw the ribs and navel in. Keep your legs strong. Take a deep breath in here. Exhale, downward facing dog. And if you were in that tabletop, you just lift the knees, come up and back to down dog. Now, a lot of times because we're pressing our chest back, right, we get this dipping feeling in our shoulders. Remember, this week is all about earth. So whatever's on the earth is your foundation. Pay attention to it. Gaze forward at your fingertips. Grip through the fingertips. Make sure you're spreading your fingers wide. Root down through the index finger knuckles, just like we did in plank. Relax your head, but instead of just pushing your chest back, think about your fingertips continuing to grip. Then think about lifting the outer hips up and back to lengthen both sides of the waist. If you're feeling extra tight in the back body, put a little bend in the knees. It's okay if your heels don't touch the ground. Big breath in, sigh it out. Then inhale, shift forward into that plank pose. Shoulders over wrists, most of us need to step our feet back so the balls of the feet are underneath the heels. Now inhale, shift the shoulders all the way forward past the fingertips and you come to the tips of your toes. Put your knees down and bend your elbows, lowering down to chaturanga. Chaturanga is where your shoulders are in line with your elbows, then come all the way down onto your belly. From here, you're gonna rise up onto your forearms for Sphinx Pose. Aligning your elbows slightly forward of the shoulders, taking your elbows shoulders distance and your hands just slightly wider. Roll the inner thighs up towards the sky, lift the low belly. From here, begin to pull your elbows towards the back of the mat. Notice as you do this, you feel this traction as if the spine is growing longer. You'll also feel, if you really try to pull the shoulder tips back, you'll feel the muscles in your back body start to turn on. Those muscles and the strength of those muscles are really important in life and in the practice. And just feeling that nurturing sensation from being this close to the ground. I love these prone positions on my belly. Now take the hands a little bit wider. If it's available to you, you'll push down through your hands and lift your elbows up. We call this seal. Just make sure you're not over squeezing your butt. So you'll know you're doing that if your pubic bone is pushing too firmly into the mat. Rolling the inner thighs up will help to neutralize the pelvis. And once again, think about pulling the shoulders back and pulling the hands towards the back of the mat, engaging the back muscles, lengthening the front. 
Inhale and exhale, release. Lowering the forehead all the way down to the mat. Sweep your hands behind your back and interlace your hands just like we did in that Tadasana shape in the beginning. Press the palms together, keep a little bend in the elbows. I want you to really push down firmly through your feet so that your knees lift, but the inner thighs roll to the sky. Inhale, begin to use those strong back muscles to lift your shoulders, your head off the ground. Your ribs are still on the ground. You'll probably feel a nice or intense stretch across the shoulders. If you want a little more, keep gazing down so the back of the neck is long. Lift up a little bit higher and lift your hands off of your buttocks. Draw the navel in. Inhale and exhale, release. Forehead comes back down. Release your hands, place your hands flat next to the floating ribs. Index fingers pointing forward. Firm the elbows in and inhale, lift up once again. This time, the ribs come up off the mat. The pelvis stays down, cobra pose. If you want to take it further, push down through the feet, lift the inner thighs and lift your legs, hips, pelvis all off the ground. Push down through the hands and pull the shoulders back as you inhale. Maybe look up for upward facing duck. Exhale, downward facing dog. Hmm. Finding the solid foundation in your hands, that rooting action through the fingertips, the rising action through the pelvis. Bringing your feet together. Inhale, reach your right leg up and back. If you're feeling really tight as you lift up in the back of the left leg, you can come up onto the ball of the left foot. Bend your right knee, open the hip. Inhale fully. Exhale, bring your right knee forward towards your nose. Bring the shoulders over the wrist and to your best ability, step your right foot forward between your hands. We're gonna start to move a little bit here. Spin your left heel down, line it up, heel to heel or hips distance. Inhale, rise up, warrior one. It's not like we haven't been moving. <laughs> but here we are in one of our uh, second or maybe one of our third standing postures. So once again, you want a wide enough foundation so the feet are about hips distance apart, okay? Bending into your right knee, pulling the right hip back and into the midline. The back heel is spun down, push firmly through the outer edge of the foot, lift the navel. Then as you inhale, lengthen the spine. Challenge your balance by gazing up and bringing the palms to touch. Exhale, draw your hands to your heart and begin to heel toe your right foot to the left one step, turning your pelvis and your torso to the side. Open your arms out wide, warrior two. Making sure that your right knee points forward over the second toe of the right foot. Because we have strong legs, or maybe we want strong legs, we'll bend the right knee so the thigh is parallel to the ground. Lift the low belly, gaze over the right fingertips. You've got this. Feeling the earth beneath your feet, your strong toes or strong balls of the feet and heel rooting down, your toes lifting up. Flip your right palm, inhale, reverse your warrior, keeping that bend in your right knee. Exhale, Parjva Konasana or side angle. You can bring your right elbow to the top of the right knee or slide the right fingertips down to the mat on the inside of the foot. Left arm up towards the sky. Try to find a neutral place for your head so that your neck doesn't feel cramped. Draw the shoulder blades down, draw the low belly in, and maybe even revolve your gaze up towards the left fingertips. When I do this, I feel a stretch across the left side body. Now push down through, root down through your feet as you inhale, rise back up, warrior two. Exhale, windmill the hands down. Spin to the ball of your left foot. Slide your right foot back towards the middle of the mat and lift your left foot up. Now, engage your left toes. Begin to fold over your right thigh. Grab a hold of your right ankle with your right hand. Left fingertips are on underneath the left shoulder on the mat or to the outside of the mat. And you begin to pull your forehead in towards your right shin, standing splits. I like to watch my foot, my right foot, do a little dance here because now I'm balancing on this right foot. So you really get to see all of the muscles in the foot doing their work. You can lift your left leg up a little bit higher if that feels good to stretch the hamstring. 
and then inhale to a flat back, fingertips underneath the shoulders. Step your left foot back, your right foot back into plank pose through the vinyasa, so shift the shoulders forward. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's move to that left side. Inhale, left leg rises up and back. You can always rise to the ball of the right foot. Bend the left knee, open the hip, stretch into the hip flexors. Exhale, knee towards your nose. Using your core, shift your shoulders over the wrist and step your left foot forward. Spin your right heel down, either hips distance or heel to heel. Inhale, rise it up. Warrior one. The hips are squared to the front of the mat. Think about pushing firmly through the outer edge of your right foot as you roll your inner right thigh back behind you. Bend into your left knee. As you inhale, lengthen the sides of the waist. Bring the palms to touch. Lift your gaze up and exhale. Draw your hands to your heart. Heel toe your left foot to the right one step and open the arms out wide, turning the face with the torso and the pelvis, the side of the mat, but your gaze over your left fingertips. Bend deeply into that left knee, but make sure the left knee isn't caving in towards the right. This is just going to hurt your knee, maybe even your hips. So use the outer left hip, pull it back and into the midline. Lift the low belly. Maybe try to smile a little bit. That always helps. Bend a little bit deeper. Flip your left palm. Inhale, reverse your warrior, but try to keep that deep bend in that left knee. Stretching into your left side body. Inhale. Exhale, Parjva Konasana. Left elbow can come to the top of the left knee. This is a great uh, modification for those of you who might need a little more lift. If you want to take it further, fingertips come down to the inside of the foot. I like the inside of the foot more than the outside of the foot just because it allows for me to keep or to get an extra stretch in the inner groins, adductors of that left leg. You can gaze down, forward, or maybe even up. Just make sure the shoulder blades draw down. Then pushing down through your feet, inhale back up to warrior two. Exhale, windmill the hands down as you spin to the ball of your right foot. I like to slide my left foot back so I'm not, you know, teetering over the edge of the front of my mat. And then I rise up and lift my right foot up. Engage the right toes. I like to point because I want to find more length in the front of my lifted leg thigh. Grab your left ankle with your left hand. Brace yourself with your right fingertips. Inhale. And exhale, pull your forehead to your best ability in towards that left shin. Really feeling the back of that left leg begin to stretch. And also, once again, seeing how much your left foot needs or the muscles in your left foot need to work and calibrate to find that balance. Maybe the right leg goes up a little higher. Inhale. Flat back. Exhale, step back, vinyasa, plank pose, chaturanga, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. Let's add on to that, move a little bit faster, inhale, right leg reaches up and back, bend the knee, open the hip, exhale, knee to nose, step forward. Warrior one, inhale, rising up, one breath per movement for the poses we've already done. Exhale, hands to the heart, open wide into warrior two. Bending deeply into that right knee, flip your right palm, inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, side angle pose of choice. Now inhale back to that reverse warrior, straighten your right leg. Make sure that your right knee doesn't turn in. So you wanna pull that right hip back and into the midline. Reach the right fingertips up and back first. Then take your right fingertips forward. Lean the right hip back as you press the right shin forward so you're protecting the knee. And bring your right fingertips either to the right shin, left arm up, or the outside of your right shin on the mat. Triangle pose. Trikonasana. A lot of times when we come into this from warrior two, it's a bit too wide. So if that's what you're experiencing, you can always step your left foot just slightly forward. Draw the shoulder blades down. One long line of energy from the right fingertips up through the left fingertips. Spread the fingers, maybe even gazing up. Draw your ribs down towards the frontal hip points and the navel in. Let's work on our balance a little bit more. Look down towards the mat. Then begin to bend your right knee. Reach your right fingertips forward of your right foot. 
Make sure the right fingertips are to the outside of the right foot and stand on your right foot into half moon pose. Your chest, your pelvis, and your left toes are all facing the left side of the mat. Even though you're bracing yourself with your right fingertips, draw the shoulder blades down. Don't forget to draw the ribs and navel in. I could say that in every single pose. And if you want a little bit more, you can take your gaze up towards the left fingertips. Remember, falling is just part of learning. So if you fall, come right back. Then gaze down. This one's hard, but you got it. I know our right leg's working really hard. Bring your left fingertips down to the mat. Square your hips. So start to roll the inner left thigh up towards the sky. Your left toes should face down towards the mat, the foot flexed. Draw your outer right hip back in and squeeze the inner thighs together. Put a little bend in your right knee. Really engage your core and bring your hands to your heart. Modified warrior three, you've got this. If you want a little more extra work, you can straighten your right leg. Pull your left knee into your chest. Woo. Stand tall on your right leg. Grab a hold of your left knee, our final balancing posture on our feet. You're gonna take your right hand to your right hip, your left hand around that left ankle. Bring the sole of your left foot to your right inner thigh. Press the thigh and the foot together. Bring your hands to your heart, maybe arms up, tree pose. Inhale and exhale, left leg goes back, fingertips come down, hop your right foot back a bit. You can always take it back through the vinyasa if you love hand standing with me. Hands underneath your shoulders, ribs in, gaze between the wrists, take a few hops off of your right foot. Should feel pretty good to get on your hands if you love hand standing, and then we'll take it back through the vinyasa. Last side, we're almost done. Downward facing dog. Let's move it right along, feet together. Inhale, left leg rises up and back, bend the knee, open the hip. Exhale, step your left foot forward. Spin the right heel down, warrior one. Inhale, rising up. Maybe gazing up as the palms touch. Exhale, hands to your heart. Open wide into warrior two. Flip your left palm, inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, Parjva Konasana of choice. Then pushing down through your feet, inhale, reverse triangle pose, straightening your left leg, making sure the quad's engaged. Exhale, Trikonasana. Left fingertips to the left shin or to the ground on the outside of the left shin. If it's too long, step the back foot forward slightly. Draw the ribs and navel in, of course. <laughs> Draw the shoulder blades down. Make sure the outer left hip is drawing back and into the midline. I feel this stretch, although quite mild, in uh, the right side body, even somewhat towards the front of the right side body. All right, let's challenge our balance. Gaze down, bend into your left knee, send your left fingertips forward of your left foot, but slightly to the outside, and rise up onto that left foot. Ardha Chandrasana. This is where your left foot is definitely gonna be dancing around, <laughs> calibrating, finding that rooting action through all four corners of the foot and that rising action up through the muscles of the front of the leg. Draw the ribs and navel in, take a deep inhalation, maybe even gazing up. This side is so hard for me. And then exhale, right fingertips come down. Remember, we're all human, so if you're struggling at home, know that I am also struggling always throughout the flow. Now roll your inner right thigh up, engage your right toes. So I like to point my toes um, in warrior three. You can flex, you can floint, whatever works for you. Floint is just a flex and a point together. Put a little bend in your left knee, pull your navel in, really engage the front body, and then draw your hands to your heart. For me, this is the most challenging in the standing leg. If you want a little more, you can straighten the standing leg, draw the shoulder blades down, pull your right knee into your chest, and stand all the way up. I really feel that left foot, my foundation, working hard here. Grab your right ankle with your right hand. Bring the sole of the foot to the left inner thigh. Push the foot and the thigh together. Maybe hands to your heart. Possibly bringing the arms up for an extra challenge. Inhale. Exhale. Hands begin to come down to the ground as you release the right foot up and back. Hop your left foot back a tad. Now, if you're feeling super fatigued, step it back through the vinyasa. If you want to take a handstand hop or two, arms straight, hands underneath the shoulders, 
Gaze between the wrists, ribs and navel in, navel in, and take a few hops off that left foot. If you need to practice at a wall or not, like I just did, you can always flip over to the side. <laughs> I find that to be the best way to fall out. Through the vinyasa, we'll meet in down dog and in child's pose. Great job. Hmm. Just allowing your attention to come back to your breathing. Feeling the effects of your practice. We've moved, we've stretched, we've strengthened. And now here we are back on the earth. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Sigh it out. Bring your fingertips underneath your shoulders. Inhale, sit up onto your butt. Stretch your legs out in front of you and lie down onto your back, pulling your knees into your chest. Keep your right knee in, extend your left leg forward and just take a twist, right knee to the left. Thinking about pressing the pelvis equally towards your left heel. Lengthening both sides of the waist, opening across the right shoulder, lifting the navel. And inhale back to center. Left knee in, right leg forward, just take it to the other side. Hmm. And then back to center, extending both legs out in front of you, feet as wide as the mat, let them drop open, hands as wide or even wider than the mat. Close your eyes. And really begin to allow the earth to hold you up here. Hopefully feeling the benefits of grounding, of finding your balance. And just trusting yourself, your mat, the earth beneath you with these next few moments of silence and stillness. Thank you so much for practicing with me. See you again soon. Enjoy this Shavasana. Namaste.